Welcome to the Rain in Threes podcast with Alan Ray and Mike O'Connell. Hello and welcome to episode 16 of the Rain in Threes podcast. I'm your host, Mike O'Connell. You're with the Naismith Player of the Year finalist and 8B All-American, Alan Ray. Hey, Ray, happy Halloween. The countdown to the basketball season is on. How are we feeling tonight, man? What's good, OC? How many days we got left? Uh, right now it's uh, six, so less than six a week. Days. Yes, sir. I remember. I remember when it was like three months. Now we oh, done yeah. a, a few days, which is great. I'm I'm excited about that. This this off season didn't seem as long as last off season for me. I don't know how you feel, but last off season was it was terrible. Like yeah. I waited. It felt like I was waiting eternity. But this year, even with the NIT loss. I still feel like we're kind of right back into the season kind of quickly. Oh, Just my opinion. We, we were keeping ourselves uh, occupied, right, hey, Ray? We were we were grinding since back in May. You That's know, true. We, we, start, we started this thing up. We started getting the wheels turning in April. May, we, uh, we got it rolling. And, you know, the last few months have been awesome. We've had some great guests come on the show. Uh, a lot of knowledge has been has been transported through the years of our listeners through the the vehicle of this podcast. It's it's been a ton of fun. And and last year, losing Coach Wright, we we our heads were spinning. We had no idea what to do. And we were just were celebrating because we got to keep Cam Whitmore and Mark Armstrong, right? That was like the victory of the offseason. This past offseason now, we had a heck of a timeline, right? Like think about where we started. And that was the first thing we did. On the first episode of Rain Threes, we walked through what had transpired since the loss to NIT, right? Like, you know, Justin Moore, Eric Dixon agree to stay. Then we start hitting the transfer portal. Baker Dunleavy becomes the GM of the Villanova basketball program. I mean, a, a ton of stuff went went down with NIL, and we got four transfers who I, are going to be need to be key pieces to this success, success of this basketball team in this upcoming season, and I mean, it's it, there's been a lot going on, a lot to talk about, and finally, here we are, A-Ray, entering the month of November, six days away, right now from where we're recording live until this basketball season gets started for the Big East, and boy, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, it is, and um, like you said, that was a lot a lot that was going on in the offseason. Um, let's see. We had a lot of transfers. We finally hit the uh the recruiting trail. We got some recruits in. Um oh, yeah. brought in some new coaches, Corey Fisher, Ash is back, like you said, Baker's G- GM. Uh man, I think we did good. Like you said, this off season, it did keep us kind of kind of busy a little bit and kind of kept my mind off the, the long wait, but we're here now. And I'm I'm happy with all of the additions that uh, Villanova made this offseason. They were great additions, and they were the additions that were needed to be made, you know? Like, I can't stress this enough. Uh, if we didn't do anything, then it would be a problem, you know? We'd probably be going into season looking like, I don't know, Providence or somebody? Shots fired. <laughs> but, uh... Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm just happy with 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 the direction that we're going in, and uh, I'm I'm super stoked for the season. Just like I know you are, and I know like everybody else is. We all want to see, you know, we want we want to see these guys in action, and we want to see them on the court, and you know, we want to make up for what happened last year. Exactly, and 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 like you said, the the recruiting that's just this over the course of this past few weeks, months. We're getting Mosley, getting Hodge, and getting uh, Malcolm Thomas as well. It, it really kind of just alleviates so much of the pressure that was on Kyle Neptune and staff saying, like, all oh, these guys can't recruit high schoolers, right? But they went out, got a couple four stars. I know they're 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 building over type guys, and they might not be five stars, sure, but these kids are are great. They look awesome on tape, and I think that they have the right kind of mindset to really succeed and thrive in the Villanova basketball culture. And right now, it's like, okay, we're, we're, we're guns ablaze and heading into the season with reloading in terms of talent. We're the oldest team in the entire country with the addition of these four uh, senior uh, transfers. 
and we're returning Justin Moore and Eric Dixon, two of the most experienced guys, all Big East guys uh, from the Big East Conference this last season. And now that Justin Moore is back at full strength, Dixon is is, is really kind of coming to his own now. It's like almost like I'm so excited to just watch him play and him and see him do his thing. And then we get we have to see Tyler Burton. We get to see TJ Bamba, Hakeem Hart, all together as one. Don't forget about Mark Armstrong, Brandon Housen. I, you could you, the list goes on. There are a lot of guys to be excited about, and some of them won't even we won't even get to see right away. Right, it might take a little while to to get the rotations figured out and things like that. But man, it it, it is just an unbelievable whirlwind of an off season. That's why I think it went by pretty quickly, a Ray, because there were so many things going on. Yeah. And and we we talked about at the beginning when we first started getting rain and threes uh, really up and running was like wow there's a lot of questions to be answered there's a lot of a lot of holes that need to be plugged and here we are less than a week away and we're I'm damn proud I'm I'm damn happy and extremely excited to get this thing going yeah me too um, I'm really excited um, I'm, I w- I want to see these guys. This this American game, we play American the first game, right? That's right. All right, so I'm not going to take too much of that game. You know, it's it's a it's a lower a lower C. Not I want to say C, but as a as a lower talented team. I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't wanna, yeah, I don't want to yeah I don't want to downplay them guys because it's 2023. You know, I, I'll get I'll get a a shit storm on Twitter. I'm just I'm going to be looking at the game, looking for how we flow in offense, how we play in defense, um, our rotations. Like I'm gonna be looking at those that those kind of things, like those little detailed things. A lot of I know everybody else is going to be wanting to see the big plays, a lot of points getting scored on the board, lockdown defense because it's American. So I get it, but don't set yourself up for failure thinking expected a team to win by 20 and then they win by 10 and now you got concerns because you expected them to win by 20 you know that's that's just where i'm coming from now i i understand that and optics of losing or not lose well losing and that's besides the point i don't expect that don't, to don't say that but uh the optics of a close game against american and you know patriot league basketball you know, you got to throw some respect on them. They got some decent programs in there. American, uh, it has been in the tournament, right? They, we've seen them as a lower seeded team. Villanova actually played them and had a tough time with them back in 2009. A Ray before they went on their Final Four run with with Scotty and, and Stokes and Fisher and Anderson and that whole squad. First round game, American was a 14 seed. I mean, that American was beating us most yeah. of the game. And Nova ended up winning 80 to 67 was the final score, if I remember correctly. But we struggled with them. And that can happen, whether it be at the beginning of the tournament, right? First round game, a lot of things uh, moving parts, you're trying to get settled. And the yeah. same thing with the start of a regular season a lot of moving parts, you're trying to get your mojo going, everything like that. And obviously, Everyone wanted to talk about, oh, what, how did it look in practice? We heard from Jermaine Samuels, Colin Gillespie, that the guys looked great in practice. Uh, it was hard fought, high intensity. There were some battles, hopefully some fights that we like to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, just the guys going at it really, like the w- same way you would go at it with, with uh, Kyle and Randy and, and Mike. And now with, with with the all of the hoopla about the secret sh- scrimmages, A-Ray, you got to think Villanova should be prepared after taking a team like Duke, who is the a top five, top two team in the country when it comes to preseason polls. You got to think that maybe that allowed the Wildcats to get some of that rust off and and really prepare for the for this American matchup, uh, mentally speaking. No, I mean I think it does. Um, I know you seen my tweet. I was saying I don't really care about the scrimmage results. Yeah, I mean, I don't, but like you said, you got to feel good about the reports coming out of how Villanova played against a blue blood team like Duke. Like, there's no, there's no being around that. There's no going around that. Obviously, as a Villanova fan, like you're happy to hear that for sure. But me personally, I understand. Like, I know 
it really doesn't mean much because I mean, it's just a scrimmage. It's just so many different things that go into play during scrimmages. Like we don't know how long the quarters were. We don't know the situations of like how these they scored the points. So we don't we don't know. But in total, they're saying that it was a great outing against Duke. And like I said, as a Villanova fan, it's great. It's great to hear that. But we we need to do this when the lights is on, when the season start. Like that's when we need to show up. And and win games like point blank period win games so good tune up against Duke great for the for the university for the fa- for the fans you know just seeing or just hearing about yeah how we played against Duke with all these new guys that we got because there's still a lot of questions about can the team gel um. Are, are are we going to be good? Are they going to be able to gel with each other? Are they going to play Coach Neptune's coaching? Like, it's a whole bunch of different um side stories going on for this year. So it's good to hear something like this going into the season. Yeah, exactly. And, and here are some of the things that we heard from, from unofficial sources, I'll say. But I do trust a couple of them that, that gave me some details where I'm like, all right, this, this doesn't sound like BS. This sounds like the real thing because, you know, no one's really conjuring these things up out of thin air. Yeah, but uh, got some good news. Got some bad news. Tyler Burton apparently looks be- like one like one of the best players on the court out of both teams, let alone just Villanova. But he did tweak his ankle, so some good news and bad news there with Burton. You love to to hear that he he looked great out there, but also very tough. A Ray, we discussed when I first got the news that injuries are just never fun to hear about, especially before the regular season even started. But he should be okay, but he didn't play. Uh, they played two sec- two separate scrimmages, and it was he tweaked his ankle at the beginning of the second separate scr- of the second scrimmage. Yeah, he apparently will be fine. We won the first. He's better. Twenty. Be. We won. Hey, he'll, he'll be fine. You're right, though. He better be. <laughs> we won the first twenty minute scrimmage. So there were two scrimmages. The first one was twenty minutes. Apparently, he won that one by one point. Yeah. All right. We lost the second scrimmage, which was. A 12-minute scrimmage by 12. So, looked great in the first scrimmage. Not so much in the second, but still, 12 points is not that much, especially against a great team like Duke. Burton obviously tweaked his ankle, and I'm sure that took a lot of the yeah. intensity, the air out of the Villanova sideline. was like, yikes. But it also and depends on who, who they was matched up with, too, in that 12-minute in that no, right. scrimmage. You know what I'm there's saying? A, there, there's a lot of intangibles that we don't know about, a lot of variables that we're, we can't really predict. Uh, but... We heard from uh, some of the assistants that the individual defense for the Wildcats looked really good, but they need to be be playing better team defense. Mm-hmm. At least that's that's where they they were at on Saturday when they uh, they scrimmaged Duke, and it should come with time, right? You you think yeah. that more reps, more chemistry will develop, especially in game time atmospheres, playing in these early games in November and December. In the battle, battle for Atlantis tournament, where they're playing multiple games, uh, you know, day in, day out, and you know, it, it's listen. I think uh, I think there's a, a legitimate bench on this team. Is it what they said as well? Like there's a, a there's a rotation of guys that can come out off the bench and really help us out, and we don't have to roll. Because I mean, last year we had some injuries. A Ray, it was a short six seven man rotation for a while. Yeah. Now I think we have some more depth. And uh, overall, the message was that the Wildcats, Villano played for played really well for some stretches, but there's still a lot to learn from the scrimmage against Duke. So we'll take that with a grain of salt. Uh, I did feel like it was necessary to report that on the pod, let the Raiding Threes fans know what, what was going on when it comes to that, because a lot of things were swirling around Twitter, X, Twix, whatever you want to call it. And I think it's necessary to, to get that out there because I believe in, in in most of this, a lot of this stuff, because I, I do trust uh, my sources. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying, um, and I'm 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 rolling with you for sure. Yeah. We just gotta we just gotta make sure we carry it over into to, into the start of the season. And and like you said, um, this this they seen that there was some work that needed to be done in that scrimmage, like you said, like the help side defense, off ball defense. Um, and yeah, you can work on that for sure, but you know, you only get better at that really with, with in-game reps. 
So that's why I'm stressing, like, I know everybody want to see us beat American by 20, but, like, you can't you can't be upset if we win by, like, 10 or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, American is a good game. It's the first game of the season, but it's also a good practice game to, like, refine your 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 tools and and your skills and your communication like it's still for me a practice game even though it's not a practice game like I'm looking at American as a team like okay I still need there's still some things we want to work on like let's work on it during this game right now because in a few games we got some big boys coming up you know what I'm saying and went went in, in in the schedule so for me, American is still like a practice game. You can yeah. t- s- say what you want. For me, I just feel like it's still a practice. <laughs> it's a- I hear you. I hear you, man, right? And I, I think and they, sh- and they shouldn't lose. No, they definitely shouldn't lose. Work on your stuff and don't lose. Yeah. Hone your skills. Exactly. We're fine. I like that word that you used. I think that's a perfect way of putting it. But uh, I do think that this team is talented enough to get by, even if they don't play the greatest, even if they're. They're still figuring some things out. I think they'll be okay talent wise to make up for that and, and come out with the win. And and sure, you, you, everyone would love to see uh, an 82 to 51 victory for sure. Yeah. Is that going to happen? Probably not. You look at last year. Our, I mean, our other team last year, talent wise, is not as great as this year, you would think. Delaware State gave us some trouble, right? It wasn't, that game wasn't a blowout. I mean, I think that Nova won by 14. So I'm expecting something similar to that. Maybe we see some flashes of brilliance from guys like Bamba, Burton, Moore, Armstrong, like some of, these, some of the athletic guys that we have. You know, We'll see some poster dunks or something like that, some alley-oops, get us fired up. But you know, overall, I'm, I'm sure American will be able to, to score a, enough points to keep it interesting for a while. But I, I expect I expect Villanova to win by, by 15, 20, 25 points. And I, I wouldn't, would I be shocked? If, they, if it was a, a struggle and they win 71-61, no. And I respect what you're saying too, A-Ray, but you think differently than a lot of, uh, of yeah. the spam base, right? So it's just yeah. funny to think about that. But I get what you're saying. It's going to be a learning experience. And Monday, November 6th, that's when it's going to go down. That Friday is the next game we play, LeMoyne. So talk about LeMoyne. Like, Americans are respectful program. LeMoyne is still kind of a... A newer program there i feel like it's a they're yeah. still trying to figure it out over there but when it comes to you know legitimate i would say competition american is not far from that like you know the big boys are coming but american is is legit uh patriot league basketball is solid and in, uh the third game of the season then is Penn. right big five is always you know interesting we lost them a few years ago that wasn't that wasn't fun but uh, I like what you're talking about when you're when you mention it. Hey, we we still gotta get better. We gotta use these games the right way. We can't just look to just try to blow them out. We gotta figure our stuff out in game time, environments, atmospheres, things like that. Yeah. Um. And like for me, my personal experience, like we played against like a team like Longwood. I don't know mm-hmm. if that was my CEO, whenever. But I'm going into that game and I'm like, we're gonna work on our stuff, but. That was the game that I um, set the record for threes in the in a game. Yep. Like, I'm using games like that to do stuff like that. Like, I, I shot <laughs> 16 threes in that game and made eight. I went 50. percent But at the same time, I'm working on I'm working on my stuff and I'm working on like finding shots. Like, I, I went to the Longwood game and I'm like, I'm I'm gonna work on like finding shots this game, like within this offense. How I'm gonna find shots. And I found a lot of them that game, and I wind up um, getting a getting a record just just off that. But I think let's agree that we both want to see the team in full control of the game. You know, like it could yes. be a close it could be a close game, but you know how some teams is close, but they're in control. Like let's be in control the whole game. Yeah, I don't want to ever feel like, oh, the, the game's getting away from us or anything. Yeah. Like you said, you always want to do that. Like, all right, if, say, they go on a run, we're able to answer that with, with a run of our own, you know. Yeah. Be able to to maintain a, a solid, you know, keep them out of, like, you know, within striking distance. You want to keep, like, a, a, a like an 8- to 12-point cushion at all yeah. times. And hopefully, 
you know, we develop, make a run in the second half, and my dad put him away. That's that's how you know, I think the both of us see realistically see that game going. But I really like the, the the you know the narrative that you're pushing. That is like, listen, guys, this is this is for the players to work on their stuff, right? Refine their skills, hone, sharpen. You know, iron sharpens iron a little bit. Maybe they can challenge each other to be like, yo, like I want to see you see you be play, being player, not just individual defense, but team defense. Like we talked yeah. about uh, from the reports from the, the Duke scrimmage. And I know Americans not Duke, but still, you you can tell when a team is gelling uh, defensively. And I think yeah. Coach Neptune and staff are going to make sure these guys are doing that. Uh, like, but, like against American, like I want to see, I want to see a Mark Armstrong. I want to see you getting in the lane. Like I want to see you getting in the lane time and time again against American and make plays. Like, cause that's what we're going to need you to do this year. We're going to need you to get in the lane, make plays, and create for everybody. So, like, against American, that's what I want to see, Mark. I want to see Mark getting in the lane. Like, um, Dixon and and and, uh, and Moore, these guys are going to be our leaders. Like, I want to see them leading against against American. Like, I don't care about how many points they score or whatever. I just want to see them out there being leaders, being leaders to the young guys because that's going to help us when we play against the top – 10 the top 25 schools like i want to see i want to see a bomba establish itself like okay i'm gonna be scoring this year so against american like i'm getting 15 i'm getting 20 tonight hakeem hart if you're gonna be mr intangibles i want to see you do all those against american like that's that like that's the stuff i'm looking for i want to see like the games like that kind of establish people's roles during the season as well like if if that makes sense, you know, practice. Yeah, you can establish roles, but in the game, come like you see T.J. Bomber shooting the ball. Like you know, okay, this is our scorer. You see Mark and Justin getting into the lane, making plays. Okay, these are our playmakers. Easy's our scorer. Um, where like he's going to be a presence for us in the paint. Like he's going to be blocking shots, rebounding. Like I know what I'm gonna get from these guys. You know, I want to see, I want to see everybody habits, see what you guys are going to bring to the table against American and what's the other team. And no, I, I completely agree with that area. You, you want to see everybody kind of carve out their own role a little bit, right? Yeah. Get, get started on, on kind of, you know, making sure that they have, everyone has their, their unique identity yeah. on the team mm -hmm. and is able to kind of come together and carve out that piece there by and be like, all right, this is how I'm going to contribute night in, night out throughout the season, not just in November, December, when it comes to Big East play. Like I want to see Brendan Brendan Housen come off the bench, knock down a couple three pointers. And I, yeah, I want to see I want to see Chris Arch come out and prove that he is, you know, some of the greatest greatest assist to turnover ratio guards in, in not only the Big East but in the country. Like I, I want to see everybody come out and, and do their thing a little bit. And I sure I'm not like you said I'm not asking for a double double from from Eric and and a thirty point game from Justin or this and that. But even I, I love how you brought up Armstrong getting the lane. I don't care if he's missing or if yeah. he's if he's if he's getting called for charges. Just just get out there and, and do it, man. Yeah. Like, that's how you're going to get better. And you, I want to see him attack the ten right, be more of a slasher and and create offense and kick out and find shooters on the three point line because that's that's what we've seen from from Bamba from from Hart when they were at Maryland, Washington State. Is hey, like, <laughs> I'm going to be. What did you what did you say, Ray? Kick to me and I'll hit the three, baby. For like, sure. Come like, come on, that that's that's what we want to be able to witness on Monday night. Mm -hmm. And I, I would not be shocked if we see that, at, at least for the most part. Yeah, and, like, housing. Like, housing, when you come in a game, like, I want to see you searching for shots. I want to see you mm -hmm. finding shots. If you want to be one of the best shooters in the league or in the country, you got to find shots. And I want to see you against that American game find shots. Because if you can't find shots against American, you're not going to find shots against UConn. You know what I'm saying? Cause they're gonna be on you. Show me how you show me show me what you got against American. Like show me your habits or like what do you bring into the table? Like those that's what those games are for. Obviously you wanna win those games, but that's what those games are for. Longino been out for so long, gets the opportunity to come back and play, get your confidence back. Like a game against American. Is like the time to get your confidence back. You know what I'm saying? He's been out for a while. Get your confidence back. Easy, get your confidence in this game. Justin, 
get your kind. This is a big confidence game. Start the season. A lot of hype around it. You don't want to play bad. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just an exciting time for so many different reasons. No, I, I love that about Longino too. You got you got to, you can't forget about him too because yeah. he can he can be such an essential cog of this machine that is Villanova. And you know we've seen flashes of, of, of his abilities in the past, and it, his problem is just he's he's been uh, injured, really struggling to stay healthy. That's that's really it. And, and I talked I there. talked to him at Hoops Mania too, and uh, he seems real confident this year about um, the way his body feels, injuries, like he's ready to play. Um, I talked to him. He was very excited about it. And uh, I'm a big Longino fan. You know, I told him that. And um, I'm definitely rooting for him this year, too. So he's going to be a, a big part of what we do. Um, he's definitely experienced. And I don't know if people un really understand how the size he has. Like, this kid is big. Big body. If you, if you see him in person, like, he's he's a he's a big dude. So he, he's going to help us out. He's going to help us out a lot. And he's really excited about it. And uh, excited about the opportunity. We we just got a we got a deep team, man. Um, let's let's go over the bench real quick. We got Housen coming off the bench. Yep. Um, Longino, uh, Ware probably come off the bench. Armstrong's got to be coming off. Armstrong. All right. Um, you know what? I'm you know what? I'm excited to see this shit too. Nah, nah, nah. Yes, nah. <laughs> yes, because he really impressed me. In the uh, the blue white scrimmage, right. I didn't really get to see him before that. You know, he was always injured, and now thinking about it, when he, and I did see him, like he might have been injured when he was playing before, but seeing him in this blue white scrimmage, he looks slimmer. He looks much stronger. He looks super athletic, and he looks like he he really looks like he can play. And I I think I see why. The program was so high on him because if you talk to anybody and you would say, hey, we need a new big, we need another guy down low, the answer was always, oh, nah, Nana, we have Nana, we have Nana, Nana's the guy, Nana's the guy. Right. That was what you was hearing from Villanova. And uh, I'm really excited to see him play. Um, he definitely impressed me, probably the most out of anybody in that blue-white scrimmage, just, wow. just off sheer – not being a not really getting to see him play and then getting to see him out there, you know the way he moves. He's he's not slow. He's athletic. He's strong. Like I'm excited about that. So okay. he he's another one off the bench. I mean, yeah, Chris Arch. I mean that, that Burton, that's about it. That wraps it that wraps it up. I mean, Burton probably gonna be a starter, man. You know, ha Hakeem. Yeah, he'll be in the starting five. But I mean, that, those are some solid bench pieces, man. Because you're gonna have Armstrong coming off early, Housen, Longino, and Joku, Arch. I mean, these guys, if they're if they're healthy, they they, they better be ready to go because they're gonna get some minutes for sure, at least in the beginning. You would think, you know, we should sure. work them out, throw them in there to see what they can do. And Joku, I'm not gonna lie, I love what to hear that he really looked great in the blue white scrimmage at Hoops Mania. But I'm not putting any any expectations, any yeah. sort of. I, I can't put a label on him just yet. I, I, I haven't seen enough. You obviously saw a little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, kid's really nice kid. Seems like a Villanova type guy. He's, he's put his head down and, and gone to work and battled through injuries. That, that Obviously, that's not something anyone you wish upon anyone, but it seems like he's been able to do it and get through it. And I, I'm, I'm praying and hoping that he's able to to get and, and have an impact this year because, boy, you know, after this season, you know where we're going to need him in the future. So, yeah. Uh God willing he he's able to 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 be healthy and and maybe you know get some get some interesting meaningful minutes at the beginning of the season and then who knows down the stretch you know always would be nice to have that depth especially in the front court. Yeah. I I mean I'm kind of nervous even saying this but <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to say but go ahead. Yeah, I don't I don't even want to say it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I don't even want to say it. Say it. Thank I'm you. not about to say it. All right. How about this? So we we talked about the first three games of the season, right? We have American Lemoyne. Those are tune up type games. You want to be able to hone your skills, you know, sharpen sharpen them up, get things ready to go when it comes to instilling confidence in different guys. You want to see different roles be carved out. 
uh, by bench pieces. Our starters, we obviously know our, our expectations are high for them, but like we said, we want to see Armstrong come in, see Housen come in, Longino, see what they can do, see if they, they still have their, their confidence kind of thing. But Maryland, November 17th, is the Gavit Games, the tip-off games between the Big Ten and the Big East. Hey, Ray, we're having a little game watch party at Schaefer Sports Bar in New York City, my friend. I mean, I think this is going to be a ton of fun. We're anyone that is anyone is welcome. Seriously, come through. Bring your friends. Bring your family. If you're supporting Villanova, if you support the Big East, back college basketball in general, come out and watch the game with A. Ray, myself, our producer Nick McGow will be there. Our friends will be there. Our families will be there, and it's going to be so much fun, man. And uh, we're going to have merch. I got my hat on right now. T-shirts. We're going to do some some giveaways, some raffles. We're going to have some happy hour deals. The, the owner of the bar, James Schaefer, we call, call him Schaefer, he played basketball for Jay Wright at Hofstra. This guy is... Listen to that, yeah. He, he loves the program, man. Okay, this guy is was so fired up when I called him up. I was like, hey, man, would you be interested in hosting this for us? And he was through the moon, man. He, I'm going over there tomorrow to, to meet with him in person. I've, I've We've done some events there before, some just some game watch parties during the Final Four run back in 2022. Those guys treated us... Like, just class acts. They're the best. It's a great bar, a great atmosphere, a lot of fun, very friendly for the Nova Nation environment. I mean, it's it's going to be it's gonna be an absolute blast, and it's a great game. Bill Nova in Maryland, November 17th. Man, it's going to be so much fun. So we really just hope you guys that are listening right now can make the trip to New York City for that Friday night game. It's, the, the event starts at 8. The game starts at 8.30. You can get there early. We'd love to have you. Seriously, just looking forward to it so much, a Rick. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Like uh, OC said, come out and uh, join us, watch the game, especially if you're a Villanova fan. I know it's a lot of Villanova fans out in New York, so I expect to see a, a good crowd come out and uh, support the guys and, and come support us too as well. Um, going to be some food there, happy hour like OC said. It's going to be a great time, a um, good time. Going to have some merch there, some gear. Going to have some giveaways uh, really looking forward to it. Like you said, November 17th, Schaefer's Sports Bar in NY. Um, definitely want to say thank you to um, Schaefer for for hooking us up with that for sure. Um, this is going to be my first time doing like a watch party, but I'm definitely excited about it and looking forward to seeing everybody that, that comes through. Uh, I kind of did something like this a little bit last year um, before the Big East tournament with uh Fanta and those guys but uh yeah we gotta we gotta blow that one out the water <laughs> nah man I, I i think we got we got a great reception thus far since we posted some things on our socials a lot of people go showing us love saying oh i'll be there i'm gonna bring my boys i'm gonna bring my family and uh, i i just can't wait because I, I really think it's a it's a great opportunity to, to show some support for like you said not just the program but for the podcast as well and they'll get to meet you, A. Ray. I mean, yeah. I, I have so many people. I, I'll get to finally meet you, man. I mean, to yeah. talk about that. Me, me and Nick. Me and Nick and Knight. I, I've still yet to meet you in person. It feels like we've known each other for years. But it's unbelievable. I, I, I can't wait. So you'll be coming up from Atlanta for that. So thank you for, for showing out. But I know uh, everyone that, that's listening to Ray and Threes is going to show love, man. So it's going to be it's going to be a great night. And uh, I, I just I can't believe that it's already... You know, a couple weeks away now, right? It's yeah, it's, it's unbelievable to me that that it's already right around the corner. So I'm I'm fired up. Man, if you couldn't tell, <laughs> no, I already know you are. And trust me, everybody, like I'm not like OC. Like you come up to me and say hi to me, like we could talk. <laughs> I'm not going like right, right. just shut you away or some big time. I'm not OC. You know, I'm a humble guy, <laughs> down to earth. And like I said, I'm looking forward to meeting all you guys talking to all you guys, interacting with everybody. You know, that's what that's what I do. I think I'm I think I'm pretty good at that. Oh man, you kidding me? Uh, come on, it's gonna be great. No, dude, I I can't I, I can't imagine how many people are gonna be like, dude, A Ray is the man. Like I thought he was cool on the podcast, but man, but that OC guy, geez, what's his problem? <laughs> that's that's exactly what I'm going for. <laughs> Hey, our producer too. He, he used to be a big time Villanova fan. His parents graduated from uh, from Nova back uh, back in the '80s. But I mean, 
he's now a Michigan State fan, so yeah, a little bad blood there, but he'll he'll pull out that Curtis Sumter jersey that I know he has in the back of his closet somewhere. So it's Michigan gonna be, State. It's gonna, uh, oh man. I mean they're gonna be a great team. I wish we we played them last year. We lost a tough one. I wish we were playing again this year. But you can't play the same team in the Gavit games twice, I guess. So Maryland it is. And Maryland yeah. they're 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 a good they're a good team, man. They're projected to be in the field of sixty eight. Uh, you know, Joe Lenardi, Joey Brackets has them uh, as like a five seed. So, hey, they're no joke. So it's going to be a battle. You know, and yeah. it's not going to be a walk in the park. This is going to be a big time matchup. And if Nova can come away with the win, man, we're going to be fired up. So that's uh, that's the bottom line for you right there. Come on out to Schaefer's, baby. November yeah. 7th, 8 o'clock. This is how I feel about Michigan State because I know Nick at night listening right now. This is how I feel. This is how I feel about the Big Ten. The Big Ten... When the tourney t- when the tournament starts, like they do so good up until second round, third round, and then there's it's it's exit time. Gone. Gone. But they always wind up getting like eight, ten pros in the draft that same year. Like that that, that I, I right. can't say that about the Big Ten. They'll you won't see them if Michigan State not going far, then you know, you see seeing early exits, but then the draft come around, and these guys got like eight, ten guys in the draft out of the Big Ten. So I, I give them their credit for that. I give yeah, them credit and, for that. And and Purdue, man, they, they, they've been so – have so many great teams. I mean, remember back uh 2019, we played them in the second round. We beat St. Mary's in the first round. Carson Edwards dropped like 45 points. And Purdue – I mean, they, they – it looked like they, they could have – they could have gone in the Final Four at least that year. They they end up losing the UVA. That uh, was a tough one for him. Well, obviously, where's, very, where's Carson Ed was at now? Uh, I think he was in the G League for a little bit. I don't know where he's playing now, though. To be correct, be honest with you. Exactly why I was so pissed when he was exactly. going off against Purdue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when he was going off against Villanova, I was sitting there like, oh my gosh, he was going crazy. Man. He was, he was. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. He definitely was, but I was just like, there's no way he's he's him. Like he's just having a good game right now. I don't, I don't, I don't think he was him. And this Sweet Sixteen though, too. I, I, I think I can't remember who they played, but the, he had another thirty-five point game or something. He went back to back. He was the guy looked unstoppable. But uh, he used to wear that wristband. I have his like his wrist taped up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but hey, I, I want to see some some final a final four team out of the Big Ten this year. But it's also a bummer. It doesn't look like the Gabbard games. The tip-off games are going to continue, man. So uh, I blame the Big Ted for that. Val Ackerman, the Big East con- uh, commissioner, said that you know it was it was the Big Ted that didn't want to that didn't want to continue that. I guess they're a little afraid of the big bad Big East, man. Yeah, guess so. <laughs> it's all right. Sorry, Slick. Come on, man. How you feel about that? Uh, that Gonzaga talk. You know, I, I, it's just like we we've we talked about it. I I really. I, I we've given our two cents. It would be so awesome. They're a great basketball program. They don't have they don't care about football. They are all the way on the West Coast, but I guess they're not really on the water, as you know about your surfboard uh, comment. <laughs> Spokane, Washington is is away from the coastline. It's more inland. So I, I think guess I, I think that. I deleted that. Yeah, <laughs> put down the surfboards and pick up a hammer if you want to join the Big East. But I got I get what you were trying to say. Uh, I don't honestly, I think so, so, I saw somebody, someone on Twitter, it was like talking about, oh, can, can they play like something like how Notre Dame would do in, uh, in, in football and be like a, a half partnership, half member kind of thing with the, the big East, like how Notre Dame would, would do with the Aces, yeah. play like five games or something like that, uh, in their schedule built in every season, which would be awesome because then it's like a home and away thing. Home and home, where they don't have to, both teams don't have to travel uh, the same year, kind of thing. So uh, look, I, I think there's a way to figure it out. Uh, you know, we'll see what what happens with that. Right now, I'm I'm just happy with how the Big East looks right now. I mean, it, it, from top to bottom, it's absolutely stacked. You don't want change, OC. You don't want change. I can, I'm not I tell. I'm not saying that. I, I'm 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 not saying that. If you want to go ahead and add a couple teams that are actually going to benefit this league. And, and, and like you said, uh, maybe we could banish DePaul to, you know, we could relegate them to uh, the Atlantic 10 or something, you know, by all means. But I, I, I think there needs to be 
uh, you know, something to be said about like, all right, well, you mentioned it when we talked about this, uh, you know, a few episodes ago. Is there a room for like, you know, a, a power premier conference where it's just basketball schools only, basically? And right now, we're not far from that. All the other programs that are legit are, you know, they have some football interests as well. And in the Big East, obviously not so much. So could, could you find a couple other schools like that? Maybe. It's tough uh, to see, you know, like some some schools now join the Big 12. Like Houston was a team, I thought. That would have been awesome if, if, if the Big East could get them because they, they were in the American Athletic. And so like some of those, like a Cincinnati who used to be in the Big East before in the American Athletic. So there's definitely a lot of room for, you know, aggressive expansion when it comes to possibility of getting that premier Big East basketball only school conference together but I'm happy right now eh, Ray and I, I'm not gonna lie to you I'm I'm cool with what we got yeah I, I know you are I, I'm <laughs> I'm all about expansion yeah yeah come on now nah, but the the Big East did good with uh obviously when I played it was a lot different mm-hmm. and they added a whole bunch of new teams and I mean the league is still as strong as it's ever been. So I know moving forward, the Big East is going to do, they're going to make the the, the right move. They're going to make the best move because they, they've they been doing that and they've proven that over the, the few years and the decisions that they made with the teams that they let in, the teams that leave. So I'm confident in the Big East and like you, you know, if it happens, it happens. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with how the Big East is now. 100%. And to see... I know we we have our our gripes with UConn with UConn fans. They'll know UConn is I think one of the better rivalries in all of college basketball over the last few years. And I mean to see them win it all last year, I, I was happy for them, right. God bless they they earned it. They deserved it. They they ran through everybody in in the tournament. They were it was a dominant performance from the first round all the way through the national championship when they handed San Diego State a, a, a loss that pretty much everybody knew it was coming. And now you have them ranked third in the Big East preseason poll, eh, Ray? Like, what? In any, it's hard. In, in, in any other, like, any other conference, they're probably going to be ranked number one, right? I mean, come on. It's it's hard. It's hard to win back-to-back, man. Well, like, and, and, and the reason I think that they are not one is because, like, they're just not returning all of their players. Like, look at... Look at Florida. What was it? The yeah. the team that beat us. Seven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like they beat us. Actually, no. We beat them the year before. And then they came back and beat us the next year with the same team they had with a yeah. little bit of additions. And then the next year, they won it again with damn near the same team they had. Now you're all of those guys came back. So that makes it a little easier, but it's still tough to like back to back like that's that's super hard to go back to back uh, I, I i i hear you man i hear you and yeah that that t- team with horford and brewer and joke yeah. you know, uh, that team is, is nasty and i don't care them, you kind of not happening it. Happen for you I, I, i'm not i'm not saying that they are but i'm just saying i just think like villanova got it after we won in 2016 and that 2017 team i mean I, phil booth who's coming on the show soon by the way shout out to phil can't wait to talk to him if he doesn't miss that Captain. season I think they keep, you know, they're they're back in the final four, but yeah. they lost the second round to NC or Wisconsin. That was the year 2017. Uh, but they they were number one. I know it's still the Big East was different a little bit back then, but I just still think you got to give them their flowers a little bit. Be like, all right, UConn defending national champion. Sure, they're not bringing back everybody. You know, Sonogo is gone, Jordan Hawkins is gone, but I, I still think Dan Hurley's still there, right? They still have uh, a, a core of those guys that brought in some transfers. I, I, I just think they shouldn't be third. Marquette, they won it last year, the, the Big East regular season and uh, conference tournament. And what do they do in the tournament, in, in the NCAA tournament? They lost to Michigan State, actually. <laughs> uh, but I think Marquette still has something to prove, whereas UConn has already proved it by winning the national championship. Give UConn the number one spot. Give Marquette two. I think Creighton, I think Creighton lost more guys than more, lost more talent than they damn got. sure did. I know they're bringing back Culpepper. That's awesome, and they and they went out and got the kid uh, from from Rutgers. I I think they're they're going to be good. Uh, Creighton is is back and they're reloading it again. Uh, they're going to be good until 
until they pulled Cork Brenner out the damn paint and he got to play defense on the perimeter. No, you're right about that. That's how that's how no would beat him and, and Eric dropped 30 against them uh, at Wells Fargo back in February uh, this past season. But I still think UConn should be above Creighton, should be above Marquette, at least just as a sign of respect. I think it's too close the margin of how good the, each of those teams are going to be to be like, oh, yeah, we'll throw U- UConn at three. So I'm fine with Nova being at four. And I I, I knew you – I don't want to we – we can't get into the whole Big East and we'll, we'll get through it as the season goes on. We'll talk about each, each Big East team that deserves to be talked about. But I know we were talking a little bit about the, uh, uh, this, this specific team before we started recording here. And you had something to say a little bit about, about St. John's. So why don't you give our listeners your two cents on – uh, how we should view St. John's at this current moment in time. Yeah, so right now, St. John's, everything is nice on paper right now. Patino coming in, recruits, transfers. Like, they got a lot going on over there right now, but St. John's still got to, they got to prove themselves to me. You know, I, I feel I feel like um, Patino's a great coach, but Big East is different, you know. It, it, it's it's different when you play it against Villanova, when you play it against Marquette, Creighton, UConn. Like, can you do that every night? Like, is Rick Pitino going to teach these guys how to win in a couple of months? You know what I'm saying? Like, St. John's hasn't had a winning formula at that school for a long time, so you got to like instill winning into these players this year like that are not accustomed to win it and I bring that to my situation when I got to college with coach Wright like we did not know how to win at all and it took us two years to learn how how to win so just me knowing that and how it like how much it takes to learn how to win I can't I can't put St. John's like right, right, right under us, like right there. I just can't do it. Like they got to prove themselves to me. Like they got to, they got to prove it. They got to prove that they know how to win. They got Coach Patino. Cool. But are you going to get these guys to buy in and win and win games? Like that's, that's what I want to see from St. John's. So I can't, I can't have them up there. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. Like, you know, you think, Xavier still should be above them. Providence, that kind of thing. I, I understand it. I understand where you're coming from, um, and they have a lot of a lot of talent on that team for sure. But it's coming from from a lot of different locations, all over the place. One player, one player to watch is Jordan Dingle. He was one of the highest scoring players in all of college basketball last season. He's he's from Penn. Exactly. Hey, Ray, like you know, it, it's not that's not like the Ivy League basketball respect. You know, they're they're very solid conference but it's that's not a power five conference that's not you're not coming from the sec you're not coming from the big 12 the big east the big 10 that's a whole different animal so we'll see how he does because i think he's probably the most important i know soriano is a returner i think we've seen what what he's gonna be or what he has been i think he, he can get better with different with better players around him but is is dingle is soriano these guys gonna be able to to lead this team to what is an expected now a lock for Maybe a top twenty-five team and an NCAA tournament bird. So a lot of their work is cut out for them. And a Ray, I know we we talked about not putting too much stock into these secret scrimmages, but they lost to Pace University. Okay, it's an, I know it was an exhibition game, but Pace, like you know, that's a I think that's a D two school. Like you know what what what's going on there? I know it was a yeah. close game, whatever. But so that's that's not what you really are looking for if you're a St. John's Red Storm faithful, right? You're thinking. Yeah. Wait, what? I thought we could we should have beaten that team a uh, hundred to sixty five, right? I mean, I think there's a lot for for them to prove. I think they might go through some situations where they are humbled. I think that's only you know natural for a team with this many expectations to go from, whoa, where is this program to? Oh my goodness, now Rick Pitino is the coach, and now he's just dominated the transfer portal and literally has no more scholarships to give out. But they since they have so much NIL money, kids are racing over to play for him. It's unbelievable. That's how it is. They was on ESPN the other day. They practiced. I was. Did you see that? 
Yeah, man. Yeah, they, 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 they was on ESPN. He was getting interviewed while their team was practicing in the background. I said, no Jesus deal. Christ. But uh, I like deal. Soriano. Soriano, I think he's good. Like, he he's going to get you a double-double every night. But, like, Coach Wright always used to say, you can't win big without guards. Like, you can't win championship without guards. So, St. John's guard play got to be up to par. And like you said, I mean, I'm a, I am know Dingle. I know his father, Um, you know, from, from New York. And uh, Dingle went to UMass. But like you said, you know, can can Dingle carry can can Dingle carry them? Is that the guy that's gonna carry them this year and 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 get them get them over the hump? No, I don't I don't know I, I don't know exactly. We'll we'll have to wait and see, and it's gonna be a fun kind of storyline to watch because it's New York, it's Madison Square Garden, it's Rick Pitino, it's the Big East. A lot of eyeballs are gonna be on this team because they're gonna be playing all their games. During the week on FS1, and then once they're playing on Saturday, A Ray, all those games are going to be on Fox. All uh-huh. those games will be on national television. St. Yeah. John's, they're looking to return to the St. John's of old with Louis Cardaseca and those boys running the show down there. And, and same thing with Georgetown. Georgetown expectations are not nearly as high because they get Cooley still has some more work to do down there in DC. But there, there'll also be a great storyline to watch the Big East. UConn, Marquette, Creighton, and I misspoke earlier. I was referring to Cam Spencer, who's on UConn, the transfer from Rutgers. I meant to say Stephen Ashworth, who uh, is from Utah State. He's the guard that Creighton got, who I think is going to be legit, but obviously a transfer. Is he going to be able to pick it up coming from Utah State? A little bit different. We'll have to see what he can do, but I love those three programs this year. Villanova, I think, is right there. And then I think it's the next next class of St. John, Xavier, Providence. I think Butler, Seton Hall can make some noise. They'll win some games. DePaul, God bless them. The Blue Demons, we'll see. But overall, A. Ray, this is, this is going to be a fun ride of a Big East season. And I think Villanova has what it takes to be at the top, near the top, or at the top completely at the number one position. But... It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a complete war gauntlet every single night in this conference. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited about this non-conference. Um, I'm ready to get into that non-conference schedule. We got, we got a good non-conference. Every time we play a good non-conference, it's always a love and hate relationship. Some people <laughs> are happy that we played it. And then some people are mad because, oh, we're playing too many tough teams in the beginning. But I always go back to CG and uh and Mano's team that went to the Final Four. I'm going to say again, I did not expect that team to go to the Final Four at all. Like, they was not Final Four for me. Like, that wasn't a Final Four team. But they persevered. They played. They got better every single game. They took some hits, took a step back, but they just kept pushing forward, kept pushing forward, and eventually made it to the Final Four. But that year, they had a gruesome um, non-conference schedule, and we lost some tough games non-conference. I remember we got slapped by Butler. If I'm not... Was it Baylor? Sorry. Oh, my goodness. But... We grew from that. We grew from that UCLA loss that we had that year. Like we grew from all of that, and these guys made it to the Final Four. So I'm really looking forward to the non-conference and going into the Big East. And we'll see what St. John's and those other teams do. But I must say, non-conference Big East pretty. The Big East does a good job in non-conference. You know, going into the Big East and going into the season, the Big East regular season, a lot of the Big East teams have have really good records. And then once that Big East Big East season start, them records start, them them losses start start kicking in because it's just a different animal. Um, the Big East Conference. I feel like the Big East Conference, like you said, just get it, it has so many different styles of play, and it prepares you for a whole bunch of different teams. And you can't you're not just playing one style every night like I feel like in a Big Ten. I feel like the Big Ten, you play one style every single night. You know what I'm saying? And the Big East is just not like that. 
I got you. And uh, I completely agree. We talked about it all offseason, right? right? We loved the non-conference slate for us. I mean, to just the test that we're going to have to go through, starting with the Maryland game in November that we're going to have the watch party for. So that's going to be such an exciting night. And if we come out with the W, man, it's just, I think, the start of a great season. You make a, a, have a state win. They win that game. They'll be 4-0. And then they go into the battle for Atlantis. Then it's like, okay, we got some momentum. We got a nice win under our belt. Texas Tech, always a solid program. They like to play always, great defense, always. and they're they're, they're always a, a fun team to play against because they're gonna they're gonna bring it right. They're gonna show you what they're made of. And it's like, okay, are we gonna be able to beat these guys? Who is a, always a, alive and well come March? Or the Red Raiders? So that's the first round of the, the battle for Atlantis. I think we're going to be able to, to, to get a W there. The next round, North Carolina or Northern Iowa. That's a, a tough one. We've seen Northern Iowa before a few times, even in that battle for Atlantis tournament. Would love the rematch of the 2016 title game against Carolina. They're going to be, I think, a tournament team for sure this year. And I, I think that'd be a fun one. I, I say we go ahead and win that one, right? Then, all right, two wins, right, in the battle for Atlantis. Then, in the final, it most likely looks like it's going to be Arkansas. They're the best team in the field. They're preseason ranked 11th, 12th. Look at the AP or coaches poll. Boy, could you imagine if Villanova is 6 0 playing on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, in, a, in an afternoon game for the Battle for Atlantis title against Arkansas? Man, I mean, that would be something, A eh, Ray. I hope that, that, that this team, I think that this team is capable of making that run and getting there and putting themselves in a position to be like, okay. Let's 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 really test ourselves here. Let's get these these tough games under our belt and see what we're really made of at this point in the season, which is early. So you yeah. you know it's it's hard to expect this much from this from this squad this early. But man, I I don't see any reason why this this couldn't be in the cards. So just think about that, right? Just just a little food for thought for for you listeners out there. Villanova could be six and zero playing the battle for Atlantis final against the Eric Musselman coach Arkansas team. That is probably going to be in the top two, three of the SEC and could be, be potentially a top three seed in the NCAA tournament. So, boy, do we have our work cut out for us, but why why wouldn't you be ecstatic that, that, that this is the case? I don't want any cupcake schedule in November or December. Give me the best teams from the best conferences, the best coaches, the best players, the best transfers, and the best uh, non-conference tournaments. And yeah. we got that in the battle for Atlantis. So let's, let's see it, man. Let it rip. Yeah, and uh, Battle of Atlanta is going to come down to, and it always comes down to, like, your experience on your team, your leaders. And we got a lot of, we got fifth-year guys who's been through everything you could possibly see in college basketball. So going into a tournament like Battle for Atlantis with that type of experience, with those type of leaders, I feel very good. I feel confident about it. A lot of teams that win these tournaments are, like, usually older teams, guys that have experience, that been to the tournament before, they know how the tournament, they know how like a tournament atmosphere works. So it's going to be important. Like, and what I mean, like not just on the court stuff, like guys, we just had practice. We got a game tomorrow. Like everybody should be in bed sleeping before midnight or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like we shouldn't be up late at night tonight or guys shouldn't be out like that's that's the leadership i'm talking about not just on the court like that off the court leadership that doesn't show up in the stats don't show up in the newspaper the next day but like stuff like that like that's 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 important to win in winning tournaments well it's definitely it's the mental toughness it's the relationship the chemistry that you have with the coaching staff with the players and as a program you got to think going up and being the oldest in the country with these transfers and some of the guys returning that, uh, you know, this team c can be built to succeed in a tournament this early. And boy, is it early, eh, Ray? I mean, yeah. Thanksgiving weekend is just around the corner. November starts tomorrow for us right now. And we talked about it. First three games should be 3-0. and You don't want to write off American or UPenn, but Lemoyne, that should be an easy W. Now you do write them for, off. For that game. <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm just saying, I'm just saying it, we're going to take care of business, but it's not going to be easy for the full 40 minutes. You know what I mean? It's going to be, it, it, you know, they'll, they'll show some fight. They'll show some, some, uh, you know, wherewithal, I think, 
at least throughout uh, those games. And it will do American. And, and a Big Five matchup, which doesn't mean as much as it used to or as much as it should, in my opinion. But, the, you know, so it's at, 15 it'll, be plus. Plus, uh, it'll be bought. So you're saying 15 plus those games? I Yes, we should be 3-0. Uh-huh. and and we should we should have won all three games by double digits, if not 15, 20, 25 points. All right. Okay, and, and 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 maybe we'll we'll know a little bit more after we talk after the American game. Uh, but don't get me wrong, that Maryland game is going to be fun. The the Big East Big Ten battle, the Gavin tip off games. We're going to have a packed house at Shapers uh, in New York City, and that is going to be the first major test of the season. And we're going to all be there for it, Ray. So. God bless. I, I I'm I cannot freaking wait for the American game, but boy, I I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but we're looking at that Maryland game as the first litmus test for this Wildcat team. Oh, I thought you were talking about Schaefer's being the uh, first test. Oh, it's a test. <laughs> it's a test for rain and threes. I'll tell you that. Can rain and threes perform under pressure? Yeah, for sure. Like you don't got to worry. You don't got to worry about us. You don't got to worry about us. We'll be locked in. We'll have, I think, I think we're going to pack the house. 100, 125 people will be there to watch. Uh, you guys got to come out and support, though. You listeners, that's that's what keeps us going. We see the numbers continue to creep up. Uh, we're going to continue to bring you guys great guests. We have Phil, Phil Booth, legendary Villanova guard, coming on next episode. Can't wait to discuss with him. Got a lot to talk about when it comes to Booth. But, man, I, I, I just I can't believe the season's already here. Uh, less than a week away now. We have the Shapers uh, game watch party on the calendar. More events from Rain and Threes to come. We'll be hitting you guys with pregame stuff, with postgame stuff. Some some live action will be on YouTube live. We'll be on Twitter spaces uh, during the games. Whatever it takes, man. Our, our guy, uh, Slick Nick McGow, behind the glass is doing a heck of a job. He's he's all dialed in for us. He's, uh, you know, he, he, he really is the... The straw that stirs the drink here ran right through you. So we appreciate you, uh, Slick Nick and A Ray and, and myself. I mean, we're, we're we are absolutely bought in, man. This is going to be a fun ride, a heck of a season, and boy, it, it just it is fun fun to be in this atmosphere right now. The Big East basketball media podcast world this is a fun one to be involved in right now because expectations are high, talent is high, and the pressure is on. Yeah, I mean, listen. Like you guys don't hear from Nick, but Nick could definitely be another person on this show. Like he, oh, we'll hear from him. We'll definitely great, be hearing from him. Brings great combo to 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 the guys to us when we're like off air. Um, we always talk about the players all the time. Like, what do you like? What do you expect it from Neptune this year? Like, he he he's another important part of of this year too. And like, he's, he's another one that got a lot to prove. Yeah. As long as with, uh, as well as with the players. And we always talk about players and how they need to step up and what they have to do. But in all honesty, like we all know too, you know, Kyle Neptune has to prove himself also. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Neptune fan. I'm, for sure, I'm happy about the situation and and uh, and things like that. But uh, you know, this is this is a big year for him, and you know, I think I think he's I think he's ready to like show and prove or you know make make a step forward. For me, I just want to see like a step forward, a step forward for him. You know, not just like for me and the team, but just like for him personally. You know, I know he's going through a, a, a lot, especially with like after last year and stuff like that. So just for him to to take a step forward this year, I think will be good for him, but it will be great for the team as well. Oh. Like him taking a step forward is the team taking a step forward, in my opinion. No, oh, you're you're you hit the nail on the head for sure, but. I, I like to think that he's already taken that step forward, eh, right? I know you haven't played any games since since last since this past March, but I think what he's done in the transfer portal, what he did in recruiting over these last few few weeks, months, uh, has already proven that. Like, okay, I, I'm taking this seriously. You see the the NIL money uh, is, is you know brought together is almost three three million dollars, maybe a little bit more than that. All the players are 
are, are getting this cash and it is like a good spot to be right now is yeah. playing basketball for the Villanova Wildcats. Like Coach Neptune has righted the ship after a, a 17 and 17 first season, which is not up to Villanova Wildcat basketball standards. We heard from uh, Coach Steve Lapis a couple episodes ago talking about how he believes in Coach Neptune. He thinks Kyle is going to be able to get things done not just in the offseason but during when it comes to winning games and 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 cutting down the nets at least in the big east and and making a run in in the tournament and i have to think i have to think that he has all the tools right like he has been mentored under coach Wright. he most certainly is an intelligent guy that has a lot of class has a great head on his shoulders is able to to to, to support his 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 players with not just a, a fountain of basketball knowledge but with leadership, right? He's able to connect with a lot of the guys. We heard from Jermaine, from Colin, talking about how he, he challenged them when when he was an assistant while they were under Coach Wright at school. That was awesome to hear. So I just think the the amount of, of people that we've heard from, the amount of research that that we've done just from talking to people, from hearing from different from different players, coaches, uh, media personalities, I, I, you have to think that. Coach Neptune has, is on the right path. I think we'll continue to to get better as this program does. And right now, I think it's almost like everything is there for the taking. Now just go out there and do it. Yeah, for sure. So like you said, um, he's in a position to do good this year. Um, he's definitely put himself in a position to, to capitalize off what happened from last year. So you know, I, I have confidence. I definitely have faith. And, you know, I'm big Nova guy. Big, big Nova fan. But, you know, I am I like to look at things for what they are. And, you know, I'm never going to, like, just BS anybody just to, to say, ah, just yeah. to say stuff, you know. So, I got you. like, that's just why I felt the need to say that with, with Neptune. You know, that's that's just another like one of those elephant in the room type type situations or type things that's flowing around Villanova basketball right now. Yeah, no, you're right. Like he still has to go out there and, and prove yeah. it. And I think if if we struggle, especially early, you know, I think we'll go three and zero. I mean, it's hard it's hard to look at the schedule and be like, okay, you got to think that this team's gonna be able to go three and zero. But say they they lose to that Maryland game and then we lo- we we struggle in that battle for Atlanta's tournament, like we struggled last year. Right, we we were in that Phil Knight uh, Invitational up in Oregon last year at the yeah. Nike headquarters. We struggled, man. We we lost three, four games in a row, five games in a row, and then we finally beat Oklahoma to to to, to get back on the, in the win column. But man, that was a struggle, and that was ugly, right? So yeah. if that happens last year was like okay, we had some injuries, this, that, the other thing. If that happens this year, Ray, you know who's get, where the finger's gonna be pointed at, and that's gonna be right at Coach Neptune. So it ain't gonna be at me. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. I, I, I might be pointing the finger at you, a Ray. Like, you know, how did you not see this coming? But <laughs> nah, I just think like, like take it, take for all right. Let me give you an example. So we we got Cam Whitmore last year. Like, this is what I mean. We have Cam Whitmore last year. And you look at him now with Houston. Like, it's obvious that he's an open court player. Like, he likes to get up and down in transition. Get in transition threes, attacking closeouts. Like we didn't do that last year. Like he he wasn't in those those type of positions. You know what I'm saying? Like this year, you got a Mark Armstrong, you got a Tyler Burton, a TJ Bamba. Got to get up the court. In my opinion, like you got to get up and down the court. And I felt like last year. He tried, I felt like last year the system was still run like if Coach Wright was still there. And right. it didn't feel like it was Neptune's team. Like it still felt like Coach Wright was somewhere on the sidelines. You just couldn't see him, <laughs> see where he was at. And yeah, he's he was, got an earpiece in Neptune's ear. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to see, I just want to see like Nep, like his, bring his own personality to the team this year. And okay. Because, you know, with Coach Wright, Coach Wright, he's recruiting guys to fit that slow down system. Like, he's got the players, like, to fit that system. Right. Like, I, I don't know if that's necessarily Neptune's system, you know? Right. You're right. And now, the, we, and the, we, yeah. And the guys we, we got, 
could go up and down. Like let, right. let's the guys got to get in transition and shit. Yeah, you're right. We we talked about that, right? Like we we mentioned before. Like all right, we got some some serious speed, some athleticism. Uh, these guys have serious uh, agility. They're taller. They're length. They're lengthier. Like they're stronger. Yeah. These guys. We have some legitimate like pro prospects on the team, just like from a physical standpoint, yeah. right? And then if you add like all right, let's let's see these guys really develop and they can play to their potential to their ceiling. Like I'm sure, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of these guys end up getting drafted or at least end up getting signed. Uh, by a team, like, you know, in, in some capacity. So I, I most definitely think, hey, play to their strengths, right? Like, let's let's see if we can kind of pick up the place, pace a little bit more and, and, and run some up-tempo offense. Mm -hmm. Let's see some transition buckets where we have not seen the last couple of seasons. We were some of the slowest teams in the entire NCAA the last two years. Yeah. So why not? Like, let's 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 get these guys running up and down the court a little bit. Let's let's see some see the, some flashes of athleticism that we know are, are capable of especially from guys like Mark Armstrong, who wowed us in playing for Team USA with some of the dunks that he was able to to, to throw it out. So I'm completely with you. We, we've talked about that a little bit over the course of the offseason when it comes to being like, all right, like right, let's, let's move off of what we're used to and play to what the strengths are of this current team. Like what, what can these guys, how can we bring out the best in these guys? And I think what you're talking about is 100% correct when it comes to being like, all right, we don't need to play half court offense all the time. We can yeah. play up tempo. We can run. We can we 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 don't have to worry about the guys getting gassed either because we have guys that can come off the bench. We're deep now. We have that those that three four five man depth off the bench that can replace some of the guys that you know. All right, coach, I need I need a blow here. You know, I I really think that we should be able to see that. If we don't, I think there is a bit of a red flag that does go up. Yeah. But it is it is a long season, and hopefully within the first few weeks, which, I mean, right away, November 17th, that game against Maryland, uh, and then Thanksgiving weekend starting the 22nd, we're going we're gonna to see some big boy teams, some big boy programs with Maryland, Texas Tech, North Carolina, possibly Arkansas, Kansas State a little bit later on the season, UCLA. I mean, we're going we're gonna to get tested, and it's gonna, we're going to see a lot of different styles, and I think it's it's necessary for us to, to play – up tempo and, and really get after it and try to score some points. Yeah. And like like when Brandon Housen comes in the game, like we get yes, we run a motion offense, but when a guy like Housen comes in the game, like you gotta run him off screens. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we could play our motion, but Housen he has to come off screens because everybody knows he's a great shooter. It's not just like, okay, we trying to find shots for him too, but if you got housing running off of screens, that means you got one defender constantly chasing him around the court all the time, locked onto him, and he's not helping. So that opens it up. That opens things up for everybody. And then if housing comes off a screen and gets screened, like you think the big man is not going to help? He's, he sees housing wide open. like He's going to be like, oh, snap. Like, let me go help. And what does that do? leaves the screeners man wide open and if the screeners man is not wide open he's he just got switched onto a guard and the big is now guarding housing and now you could dump it inside to easy and let him work against the smaller guy and then if they come back and double you know we run that flare screen like that's another shot for the guard you know what i'm saying so it's like it's just so many different options my my playbook is i don't even want to get in my playbook right now <laughs> No, no, we, we, we that we'll save that for another episode, and I, I'm sure we're gonna get into it, man. I don't want to get my playbook right now. I, I think I think it's gonna be like, yes, what what you're saying is, I we want to see Housen, Bamba, Moore, Armstrong play to their strengths, show what they're capable of, and and use their strengths to create opportunities for others. That's what makes building the basketball so great is when they're feeding off each other, they're creating opportunities, they're they're opening doors, they're kicking it out. They're getting insides when when it comes to you know mismatches in the post, and I think that we're going to see a lot of that. But I would prefer to see that sooner rather than later. For sure. Right? If, if we can see all different guys get on the scorecard, I know I'm not we're not asking for too much, but I want to see everybody have a good chunk of minutes. That everyone that does have a good chunk of minutes at least contribute in some way. I want to see some uh, some assists from 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 Moore, from Armstrong, Ken Bamba, and Hart be as good of a passer as that we've been led to, to believe that they are 
in in the early goings. And I think we're going to know pretty soon, like, all right, we're, we're, we are good. We're, we've are we gelled. We're okay. And it's going to be a fun team to watch. And I'm not saying it's going to be all sunshine and rainbows right away, and especially when we start playing these tougher programs. But I really think that we're in a good spot. I'm confident, but I'm not overconfident i'm not I'm, i know i mentioned before oh uh, we're gonna be six and oh in, in the yeah. battle for atlantis championship I, I think we're certainly capable of that am i expecting it 100 percent? no i'm not it's gonna be a bit of a bumpy ride at some points but i'm completely excited to see what we're made of and i know the potential that this team has and it's high it's high yeah yeah let's 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 see how the american game goes and uh the game against la mayonnaise or whatever you however you say they name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lemoyne. Well, yes, yeah, they, they, they I like that a yeah. better. Lemoyne. There you go. Oh man, no, I love it, A Ray. That's that's great stuff. Yeah, wow. We we could really keep going here, but we gotta we gotta save some of this for the season because uh, we got uh, we got Phil Booth coming on next episode. He'll be on uh, before, all right, well, hopefully before uh, the first game, and then we'll get into it right right on that Monday night. We're gonna be live, whether it's pre game, post game, during the game. We're going to figure out a way to get you guys some content your way, and it will be live on that Monday night. So really looking forward to that. Mark your calendars for November 17th. We do have that game watch party against Maryland, as you know well, or you should be well aware of at this point. We've mentioned it how many times. But, uh, man, I, I am just completely fired up for that night. We're going to have a ton of fun. I get to finally meet A. Ray in person after just watching him all, play basketball all these years. It's going to be a fun time. Got Slick Nick behind the glass doing his thing. We're hyped up. We're, ready. We're, we're we're really yes, we are ready for this season to finally start. It's been a heck of an off season. Really appreciate you guys tuning in, showing us all the love that you've had. Love and support's been spectacular. We're gonna pay it back with uh, some some free merch for you guys, some giveaways, some raffles. But uh, boy, oh boy, this is gonna be a fun season, and we're just getting started here on Rain and Three. So with the le- legendary Villanova basketball player. Yeah, Alan Ray, my goodness, A. Ray, you've been a heck of a, just not only a former player, but as Susan says, a superhero for this program, right? Shout That's what I'm talking out. about, Mr. Mr. Incredible. Incredible. Happy Halloween, A. Ray. You deserve the Mr. Incredible costume most definitely. And I I, I, I can't wait, man. It's going to be so much fun on Monday night. Every time we're, we're, we're going to get together, we're going to be able to do some post-game, pre-game, live game coverage, and we're going to kill it, man. They just keep, keep, uh, Keep listening, keep watching, keep showing love on social media, and we're going to keep delivering. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. So, finally, <laughs> mm-hmm. finally, with Villanova basketball legend Alan Ray, I am your host, Mike O'Connell. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Rain and Threes, and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace out, guys. Peace. Season about to start. Can't wait to see y'all. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs>